Euglena are odd. Metabolically, genetically, evolutionarily, even their movements are unique. Indeed, Euglena were, in the 1800s, one of the unclassifiable organisms that were responsible for the conception of a new kingdom, the Protista. Euglena are photosynthetic, so they were plants, right? Euglena can also absorb nutrients and live heterotrophically. So they are animals, right? And the molecule they use to store glucose is neither starch nor glycogen, but paramylon. So the scientists of the 1800s realized that Euglena were neither plant nor animal. They believed them to be a lower fundamental form of life Hence the name Protista, the first form of life, just like a prototype is the first example of a car, for example. This, however, is really a poor choice of a name, as protists can be highly sophisticated forms of life. And Euglena certainly demonstrate this. While classified as green algae, the core genomes of Euglena betray a very different origin. They are more closely related to the pathogens, trypanosomes, and leishmania than they are to other green algae. But the euglena do possess some algal genes and, of course, chloroplasts. These are products of endosymbiotic events leaving remnants of these algae that once lived within the protozoan that eventually became the euglena. So even within protists, Euglena are a real challenge to classify. Are they protozoans? Are they algae? They certainly function like algae, but grouping Euglena with the green algae is somewhat like creating a family group that includes yourself, your cousin, but excludes your brother and your sister, all because your cousin had some gene therapy and an organ transplant. Adding complexity to the euglena, a transcriptomic study in 2015 identified over 32,000 proteins encoded, and more than half showed no significant similarity to any known proteins at that time. If we zoom into the genome, we see the usual bases A, C, G, and T, but we also see something odd we see something called base J, a base you've probably never heard of. Turns out base J is really a modified thymine, having had a glucose added to it in a couple steps. And as you've certainly noticed in this video, the euglena can have a very dynamic structure. This is due to a unique cell wall of sorts called a pelicle. It consists of proteinaceous strips that wrap the cell in a helical fashion from stem to stern. The strips attach to each other via a tongue and groove type of interaction, which allows great flexibility, as you can certainly see in the video. This flexibility also allows a unique movement called metaboly, or its more sensible name, euglenoid movement which somewhat resembles inchworming as the euglena compresses and stretches its way forward. Well, I've certainly come to appreciate the euglena, the staples of pond water microscopy, so much more from learning about them. I hope you have learned more too and enjoyed the episode. I will see you in the future. Thank you very much.